In first century Jerusalem, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified as a heretic. He had no wife and no children, but he did leave behind a family, one that can be traced for more than a century after his death. It's possible actually to do something of a primitive family tree of Jesus. From his brothers? Frankly, they did not believe that their brother's mission was authentic. To his cousins and grandnephews. They become known as leaders of the church, no question about that. This is the story you won't hear in the Bible about the family who changed history. During Jesus' ministry here in Galilee, both Jews and Gentiles accepted him as the Jewish Messiah. But some of the hardest people to convince were his own brothers. Now imagine one day your older brother comes home and says, family, I've got some wonderful news. I'm the Christ, the son of the living God. What would you do? You'd reach for the phone directory and repeat for a psychiatrist, right? He's deluded, unless, he dies and comes back to life as he said he would three days later. Then you put the phone directory away and you believe. And this is exactly what happened to the brothers. One of the neat proofs for the resurrection, quite frankly, is the conversion of James, who, who of course, did not believe his sibling during his lifetime, but hold it after the resurrection and Jesus appears to him. That's the end of any doubts. He becomes a leader of the church and finally writes one of the books in the New Testament. James was a devout man who was well known in the Jewish temple. As a matter of fact, he was called James uh, the Just, Hodikaios is the Greek, because he was something of a holy man. He uh, was a beautiful bridge between Judaism and Christianity, and he was known as Old Camel Knees because he knelt so much that his knees became gnarled like that of a camel. After Jesus' death, the disciples appointed James the first bishop of Jerusalem. He led the first church council in history where he made the historic decision that Gentile Christians should not be forced to convert to Judaism. I kid you not, if that council had not made the decision that it did, I'm not sure the Christian church would have survived. The church in Jerusalem survived, but James, like his brother before him, died a violent death. Because James had entree with the priests as well as the Christians, they thought they could use him to discredit Christianity. So they brought him to the temple and they asked him to denounce Jesus. And instead he defended Jesus and looked forward to his coming spiritual rule. And so they toppled him down from the temple. He was still alive and it was a laundryman and they had a club that they used for beating the laundry and they clubbed him over the head. And that's what finally killed him. This is the spot where James fell to his death, leaving the church in Jerusalem without a leader. So the local believers got together to elect a new bishop. And once again, they decided to keep it in the family. Now the second bishop of the church was Simeon, or Simon, who was Jesus' first cousin. Let me explain that. Joseph had a brother named Clopas, Clopas had a son named Simeon. In Luke's Gospel, Clopas is one of the two men who walked with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Early church writers say this man was the brother of Joseph the carpenter, which means that he was also Jesus' uncle. Clopas had a son named Simeon, and so Jesus then would have had this as his first cousin, and he was the second bishop of the church. Simeon became the bishop of Jerusalem in AD 66. The Jewish war with Rome had just begun, and the city was under siege, just as Jesus had prophesied three decades earlier. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you will know that the time of its destruction has arrived. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills, 
let those in Jerusalem escape. Simeon remembered the words of his cousin and waited for the right moment to leave the city. In November, the Roman army inexplicably retreated from Jerusalem for a few weeks, a military blunder historians would later call disastrous. But to Simeon, this so-called blunder was a miracle. He persuaded his congregation to flee Jerusalem, and they escaped with just the clothes on their backs. Simeon led them to safety in a Gentile city called Pella, in the hills of modern-day Jordan. We don't know why Pella specifically was chosen, except for the fact that it was across the Jordan River. It was primarily peopled by Gentiles of the area. And so therefore, it would be quite a logical place of refuge if you want to get away from anything controlled by Jerusalem. Simeon and his congregation spent the next four years safely in Pella. While back in Jerusalem, the Romans murdered more than a million Jews and took another 97,000 as slaves. When the war was over, many believers returned to Jerusalem and settled here in Mount Zion, near the place where they had first received the Holy Spirit and where Jesus had celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. They built a new Judeo-Christian synagogue on the site where the upper room had once stood. Simeon served as their leader until A.D. 106, when he was arrested and tortured by the Romans. Then, like his cousin, Simeon was crucified. He was 120 years old. A few decades earlier, two more of Jesus' relatives had caught the attention of the Roman Emperor Domitian, who carried out one of the most violent Christian persecutions in history. The last record we have of any of Jesus' family would, I think, be the grandsons of Jude. Now, Jude was one of Jesus' half-brothers, you recall, and he had a son, we don't know his name, and he had sons, Jesus' grand-nephews. The grandsons of Jude were arrested and brought before the emperor Domitian in Rome because they were of the house of David, therefore the royal dynasty, therefore they might be pretenders to the Jewish throne. Jesus himself had once predicted the persecution of his followers. You will be accused before governors and kings. This will be your opportunity to tell them about me. With this prophecy in mind, the grandnephews of Jesus went boldly to Rome. They were brought here to the palace of Domitian. The emperor asked them a series of questions and their very lives depended on their answers. Tell me about this kingdom of the Christ. He asked them about the kingdom of Jesus and when it would be established. They replied that it was a heavenly kingdom, not an earthly one. When the brothers appeared before Domitian. He asked them about their background and so forth, and they were rustic sorts. Uh, they were used to agricultural toil, and they had only about 80 acres between them, and they showed him their hands, which were gnarled uh, from farm labor, and so Domitian decided, these don't look like royal types to me. Remove them. They're no threat to me. So at that point, he let them go, and he stopped the persecution of the church. They returned then to the Holy Land and they were tremendously appreciated for their public testimony they had made before the Emperor of Rome. And they were called the Despusine. That means Lord in Greek. These were of the Lord's family, so they were very big in the church after that. Several years later, the two brothers were martyred under a different Roman emperor. Trajan. For the next few decades, members of Jesus' family continued to lead the church in Jerusalem. Nothing is known of them except their names, preserved in early church records. The last known relative of Jesus was Judah Kyriakos, a Greek name that means Judah of the Christ. He was the great-grandson of Jesus' brother Jude. 
and the last Jewish bishop of Jerusalem. In AD 130, the Emperor Hadrian leveled the city of Jerusalem. On its ruins, he built a new city dedicated to the Roman god Jupiter. The records of Jesus' family were lost, along with the old city of Jerusalem. After that, we lose track. Uh, not that there might not have been <clears throat> generations who were related to Jesus. We have no more record of them. The legacy of Jesus' family lives on today. Two of his brothers wrote books of the Bible, and at least five of his relatives died for their faith. They were devout Jews who became the first Christian bishops in history and kept the early church alive in Jerusalem. From there, the message of Jesus, their brother, cousin, and uncle, spread to the ends of the earth. We have 2 billion, 250 million Christians today, the largest and most successful single phenomenon that has ever hit this planet.